Okay, I want to show you something. It's a windy day, you might be able to hear me, or you might not. But this is the new edition. It's finally happened. This is potentially called Van Cleef. Van Cleef. I don't know why Van Cleef. I like to live for Van Dross, but I think that's been used a few times now. I finally did it for maybe 10, 15 years. I've always wanted a van, well, I've always wanted a motorhome, a narrow boat, but I always wanted the two to work side by side so you'd rotate seasons and what you're you're doing. But anyway, I've always wanted a motorhome. And this isn't this isn't a motorhome, I know. But it's a van. It's one step, and it's going to be my new home. It's a micro camper. It's a Peugeot Partner. And this will be my new home. So I moved away for work, and the type of work I do means sort of sleeping at the warehouse. So because there's no rent to pay and stuff, it kind of left me the opportunity to put my savings into getting a vehicle because I needed a vehicle, I have no car for the last five months and this came up for Mid Kent Van Centre based in Tenham, Kent they specialise in vans, no VAT and I thought, oh this looks like too good to be true so went down there and got it with the intention of now turning it into a micro camper and I have no idea where to start what to do I've got lots of camper van books I've watched loads of YouTube videos of what people have done but this is a very small space I mean I'm sitting at the back doors there's the rest of it and then there's the bulkhead and there's the seats so what is the plan? Well. I sleep on the floor anyway, as you know. So I was thinking of maybe putting my roll bed in here. It's just like a tie mat, massage mat. That's what it is. I'm too tall to lay in this, I just realised. Um, but the idea would be temporary to put the mat in here and maybe get a blow-up bed, single. that You can deflate and inflate. I think, looking this, is the bulkhead will have to be removed. I'm not going to be transporting anything. Oh, I've just realised as well something. One second. One second, Rooney. So the bulkhead. Okay, that's changed things a little bit, at least to start. I don't know if I need to remove the bulkhead straight away. I mean, it's sharp metal, so you can't lay on it. But I've got a mat. So if I laid my mat on top of this, and push those two chairs forward, technically I could still lay in it. And if I need to use the bulkhead still for anything, I could. That's interesting, because I didn't want to use this van as 
a delivery van. I didn't get it so I could do odd jobs in it, things like that. I got it because as soon as possible, I want to convert this. So when this project that's currently happening finishes, and it'll only be a couple of months, I will be out of work and homeless again. But with this van, I'm not homeless, and I never would be fully homeless because if I wanted to and needed to, I could always go back to my parents. Um, so I'm not after like sympathy and that side of things. But now I'd have a vehicle and a home, and it also means I, for future work, I can just apply for jobs in a lot more places than I could previously, because I'm, I'm not based to one location. So once this project finishes, whatever happens afterwards, I think I could apply for some maybe some old care job work, working two long days, and the rest of my time go and start travelling. I could sleep at work for them two days as well, potentially with sleeps. So that's put my personal thing, what I'm looking at. So inside the van, looking around, just down here, there's a little recess. Now this van's only got one door. So it means all this space here would be completely usable because it's a fixed wall. I don't have to uh, worry about sliding doors, which means I could put stuff on there and fit something down in that recess. Now the back doors, I'm unsure what to do with them. Um, we'll come to them in a second. So the bulkhead goes down, those two chairs go down, and the other side here I've got this sort of area. It's got space up the top there for something, storage, it's got a little hanging hook, and that there could be used for something maybe. Um, I was thinking that maybe some folding trays on these doors so you could cook outside, have something above the doors maybe as well, for like some form of shelter in the rain. Uh, I want to get those rain guards on the front windows, maybe some nice lights and protector on the bonnet. The flooring, I wouldn't change at first. The only thing I might look at is putting some reflective insulation on the roof. Probably not even line it or anything. Like no wood or that, because there's not much headspace. I mean, I'm on the floor, my head's not far away. So, anyway, let's carry on. I want to show you a bit more of the van. And we'll see uh, maybe what else we can do. But any suggestions you've got, tell me, because this is day one in the van. It's all new. Just finished work. I just wanted to introduce you to the van. I had a suggestion, Van Cleef, for a name. It's not 100% that yet, but who knows. But, yeah, let me know. Van names and ideas how to convert this micro camper. Mm. Okay, didn't know that. There is storage underneath this chair. So this is fixed, so it doesn't move. This bit lowers down, but only by a certain amount. Um, if you pull this here, <coughs> you've got a tray there now. Mm. Right. What's good is these doors, I think. Yeah, look. So these doors do go fully extended as well. Um. Right. So there's the back. So what I was thinking was, could I lay here into that gap with my legs? They're very thin. I was hoping that one would go flat as well. And then you'd have the space, but maybe not. So that's the workable space. You've got this mesh guard, bulkhead. Maybe some trays here. I don't know what's behind this. And if that's an empty recess, then maybe that's usable space. All the windows, yeah, they're all metalled off and panelled. There's no windows, which would be good for privacy and blacking out, I guess. I wonder, hmm, could I sleep there? Hmm, let's see. Let's see. Okay, my head is pretty much on the door, but. I have that space there. Oh, 
Oh, so you could if you really had to. Get your feet there. They'd be hanging through the curtain. You've got a curtain there. And then that'd be your head clearance. So you could technically sleep here. Your legs would be fixed in a tight position, but it might work. That might actually work, and the bulkhead's still there. But I don't plan to use this for deliveries anyway. Then you just bring the bulkhead back up and just close it off with that. Okay. Okay. Storage here. Storage here. You pull your seat down, which gets you space. Bring that back up. It needs a Hoover. It's a bit grotty. It's got a laptop tray for your computer and stuff working. Uh, that's that seatbelt for that one, isn't it? Pull that and bring this back up a minute. Okay. Um, I think some people will probably take these seats out and then you get all this floor space as well. I won't do that straight away. But maybe in the future. There's storage here. Storage here. It's where you can put something in there. There's storage up here. I don't know how much you actually get up there. And across the top, there's all this storage. Oh, the packet of Smarties up there. Win win. Don't want these storage. Oh. I don't know what they're for, but just throwing things in that, I guess. You got your lights either side, microphone with the microphones, and I don't know. Handbrake. Oh! You got your ejector seat, whatever that does. Oh no, what's that do? That's for bringing the chair back. Oh no. May I need to sit on it. What does that do? What does this do? People, help me. And then we've got cruise control, all the basic stuff. It's got Apple CarPlay, actually. Five gear. Um, it's got Apple CarPlay, I just don't know how to get to work yet. I think I might need a lead that connects from the phone to this aux lead, maybe. There's no USB connector. There's storage, obviously, in the driver's bit here. There's a bit of storage there. Ah, I was looking for that earlier. Right, that's for adjusting the steering wheel. Um, windows don't fold, you have to manually fold them. Some hooks here for your coats. Could have probably hang the curtains, tie them around these for now to get started. Hang them over the front of the seats. Um, yeah. So there's a bit of space here. But straight away you can sleep in this if you need to um, so yeah starting from now I'll be living in the van so some days I'll park in works car park some days I'll park other places maybe down on the beach seafronts and try to start to get a feel of the van and how I can utilize the space that's the big question I just need to work out how to fix this ejector seat. Let's go round and to just see. Um, that's kind of important. It's kind of important. How do I fix my ejector seat? I also need a phone holder. Oh, I can't wait to get a phone with a microphone that actually works as well. Ignore my close facials, people. I do apologise. I'm going to try and hold the phone and mic in the same place. Like that. And hope that works. I don't know what I've done there. I think this is like an angler. I was pumping it, and I've there that I've gone back at an angle, and I've got a slider here. Does that feel better? Actually, that might actually feel. Oh no! Now my knees are in. It's about being tall. My knees hit the bloody cruise control thing. Oh, I think I've reset it now. There we go. Right. Oh, 
I think I've reset. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, that's the highest position it goes. That's the highest position it goes. Right. One second. Somewhere I've got a key. Just gonna shut the door a second. Box down the key. You're locking and you're unlocking in the ignition. 104,000 miles, 967. Um, service light is on. It's got a full year's MOT from the dealer as well with Kent. So, yeah, if you're looking. Uh, we are with our resident chef, the award-winning Rob Kirby, for some top cooking hacks next. Um, so, as I was saying, under 4,000 miles, got full MOT. One of the things come up is the service light. So it needs a service, so they will reset that in the future. But I did want to quickly check as well, if you click on driving, so I came here to work today. I did a short trip as well for work to pick up some bits. Averaged uh, 58 miles per gallon on that run, which isn't bad. Uh, average of 32 miles an hour. So I did get caught in quite a bit of traffic at a couple of points. So if I hadn't had that and the short trip, I probably would have got over 60 miles per gallon, which is nice. That being I'm happy with that. I put in 35 pound of fuel and it put me from zero to just over half a tank. Again, so that's not bad. Got a charging port here, your 12 volt socket. You've got your windows, your hazards and your locks. You've got this entertainment box here. All right, it's got a vehicle diagnosis thing for the car. Um, go back to menu, you've got your settings. You've got connected services, Apple CarPlay, please connect to the USB port. Where has anybody got a US uh, got a Peugeot Connect? If you do, Peugeot Connect, a Peugeot partner. Where is the USB? Like, <laughs> am I being dumb? Do I have to connect it to the Yorks lead? Or is there actually a USB socket? In my old car, I had a USB socket and I just plugged into. Um, oh, what's that down there? Is that a USB down there? What's that, people? Is that a USB? got some great angles here today. What's this down here? Right. I, I ain't got a USB lead on me. It's in the, in the work. I'll come back and I will see if that's got a USB lead. If it has, then I say connect it. It's just a really awkward position to have it on the passenger side. It's got built-in sat-nav as well. So you've got your sat-nav. It's got uh, your radio, connected services, your telephone, and then it's got your driving settings. So pretty basic stuff but with the Apple CarPlay it's going to have all your apps as well so it's everything you need I don't think there's anything else I'd actually need um, quite excited so tell me people please honestly like how can I customise this to work for me I'm 6 foot 3 I want something I can sleep in uh, cook from I can shower at work at the moment but sleeping cooking and then chilling in so sometimes I'm going to want to just relax in here hopefully I have an iPad by then if not your laptop or your phone uh, keeping warm in winter it's already getting cold maybe some curtains would you recommend curtains should I try and extend this bit above me is that is that doable it's not a lot and I am quite tall so would I miss the head height I was thinking of getting those little mirror things. I've got one there, the blind side mirror things. Maybe for the other side. The rain guard deflectors I'd like to get. I'm going to need some form of power source. So what do you recommend? Do I need to get like a large power bank? And sort of put it in the back for now somewhere? Uh, 
and security like what do you reckon for security do I need to save up and try and get someone to install some locks extra locks on the doors Cause if it's your house you don't really want that sort of stuff stolen and do you recommend taking the bulkhead out or should for I or should I just for now take out that bit behind the chairs lower it and just squeeze my legs in the gap for now and deal with that in the future yeah lots to take in um, there's a bloke on YouTube called the biker van guy I think he's biker van or van biker he's I think he said he's 47 and he's just moved into a small van he's got a VW caddy I think it's a bit bigger than this one and he said it's one of the best things he's done I've now got the opportunity to do it and long term goals is to be in the van make content for Be More Wild make music on my other channel and have like a mobile house home studio but but do a lot more outdoor content as well for Be More Wild so maybe like an inflatable kayak like I can get somewhere in here maybe a roof box is that a good idea a roof box I know it takes down miles per gallon and I think yeah a roof box on top can't get a canoe in here and I wanted a bike and it like a an e-bike that's not gonna fit in here but it could go on the roof but then you've got a massive bike on the roof all the time so could you get like a rack that fits the doors and when you open one door it moves with it lots of things but yeah honestly if you can help me people I'd really really appreciate it um, yeah I'd really appreciate it going forward so uh, over the next couple of months I'll be able to start getting the little cheap bits at first and then start trying to save and build up for the rest but I'm really excited I've mentioned this on the channel loads how much I've wanted to do van life and while it's not the big vans yet it's the first step I'm 40 I'm living in a van and I'm really excited about it as well so keep subscribing I will still be doing bushcraft I'll be still doing camping videos I'll still be doing hikes and trails and all the outdoor stuff introducing a new thing as well to the channel as part of the Beam of Wild Outsiders project but we'll get to that in the future you will be seeing a lot more van life and van incorporations into this channel as well and hopefully for the better I'm hoping yes another big reason is obviously working from the van making content but also the van's going to be able to get me to places more to make content and not just make content for my own mental sake of doing stuff um, I can sit in the van and play guitar and chill open the back doors at a nice location these are things I've wanted to do for a long time and hopefully now this is the first step so join me I hope you um, yeah I just hope you follow along with me I hope it inspires you to do the same if you are on the fence and yeah I don't know there's a lot to process a lot to process to take in I've got to work out yeah I've got to start working things out but I won't go too long to the video this video is just an introduction to the van and me pretty much just rambling any questions about the van as well just let me know but it's, yeah if you go to Mid Kent Van Centre and if you quote Be More Wild if you're interested in getting a van for no VAT as well that's one of their things no VAT you can start looking at vans that you want to convert as well and you'll be saving 20% just on the VAT uh, just say Be More Wild and they said potentially if I get people to them as well because I really like their service they're a family run business uh, they'll sort me out so maybe it will help the channel grow as well because maybe people do buy vans and say Be More Wild they'll chuck me some money hopefully in the future and maybe help me get another van in the future as well anyway I appreciate you watching everyone has already started van life you're awesome I've wanted to do this for years people that are on the fence come along learn with me I'm probably the worst person to start these sort of things because I'm not DIY at all <laughs> at all so if I can start doing it then anyone can do it and that's not just a cliche line that people say I'm generally not DIY generally 100% not um, yeah so yeah just come along join me 
and if you're not interested in getting a van but you're just interested in seeing someone escape their life and move to a van and see if they cope and how they do then tag along as well much love I appreciate everybody that does comment and helps me out and shows support and I appreciate anybody just watches as well so yeah much love to everybody stay wild stay van lifer I don't know <laughs> I need a saying for the van life stuff I don't need a saying I always feel like I need a saying for everything I do I don't yeah, just yeah, stay awesome and we'll speak soon.